So hello, good morning. Um, I want to talk specifically about Joomla 3.2, which is the latest release. Um, Radek stole some of my slides. So uh, thank you, Radek. It's not like you haven't seen my presentation before and didn't know what I was going to say. Um, so, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Brian Tiemann. I'm one of the co-founders of Joomla. Um, I'm based in the UK, although I do so much travelling that I often feel that I actually live on British Airways Road 10 CTC. I'm not going to try and say it. I apologise now. I don't speak any Czech. Um, I don't speak any other language apart from English. And some people suggest that I don't speak that very well. Um, if you don't understand me, and I'm talking too fast, wave at me and I'll try and slow down. But that's all I can do. <laughs> I can't miraculously switch to talking in Czech, or French, or German, or Russian. So sorry. So what is Brian? So I'm not a coder. I'm not a designer. I'm not a leader. And I'm definitely not a follower. What I am, is someone who's very, very lucky. Because I get to travel the world talking and talking and talking about my love for Joomla. And very occasionally, my girlfriend. So, see, there is a photo of Shelley, it's right there. Um, I do have another love, uh, chocolate and Shelley. <laughs> So you see, I get my priorities correct. So what is Joomla 3.2? Well, Joomla 3.2 is a full box of chocolates. So who remembers this movie? Yeah, life is like a box of chocolates. Well, so is Joomla. Because inside that box of chocolates, there is something for everybody. And Joomla 3.2 Although you might think, well, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, they're just small releases. 3.2 has the most new features of any release that we've ever done. I think there was over 50 completely new features, as well as customizations and improvements. So let's have a look at what some of those new features are. And new, there's also new libraries and extra functions. And it's my personal favourite, an improved user interface. So, the first one, of course, this one has no relevance to me whatsoever because nobody in England builds a multilingual website. Because we believe everybody should speak English. And that would solve the world's problems. <laughs> Unless you're French, because they believe everybody should speak French. Um, but now, in Joomla 3.2, when you do the installation, as well as being able to install other languages, you can do the multilingual setup automatically as part of the installation. Uh, if you've not spotted it, it's right at the very end, and you can't miss it. But it's there, and you can do it all in one step. Installation and basic configuration of the multilingual website directly in the install. So Radek mentioned it a little bit before, versioning. So what is versioning? Well, versioning will tell you who did it, what did they do, when did they do it, and why they did it. Okay, maybe not why. So what does it look like? Well, this is what it looks like when you've done it. In the first column, we can see the original article. In the second column, we see the current version. And in the third one, we can see highlighted the changes. Now this can be really useful. You can not just compare the first, but you can compare any different version that exists. Uh, right at the top, um, I think it's missing on this screenshot, there's a switch to the site, the content to use this specific version. You can also see the actual HTML code that's changed as well, because sometimes it's HTML code that's changed, not the actual words. And you can save any different version that you want as well, and you can give them names, and so it's easy to find them. 
it's really useful on large websites where you've got lots of different editors. You actually want to see who did that change and when did they do it? When did they change the price? Yeah. Things like, you know, when did they change that link? It's really, really useful and important to them. So again, another one that Reddit stole from me, uh, the security. Website security is the biggest thing. There is no doubt that at some point, no matter what you do, there's a good chance that one website that you're involved with will get hacked. It happens, life sucks. Two-factor authentication is the biggest thing you can do to protect your website. So what does two-factor authentication mean? It means, currently, we protect our websites with a username and password. That's something that we know. And somebody else could find that out. So they know it as well. Website hacked. But two-factor authentication means something we know and something we have. So that's two different things. And the chances of someone finding out what we know and getting what we have are much, much harder. And there's two ways of doing that. One, as Radek mentioned, is the YubiKey. And just to clarify, it's not one YubiKey per website. And the way that the YubiKey works is you just need to own one. Um, and then you can use it on as many websites as you want. If you enable two-factor authentication on your website, you'll see that there's now a third field. It says secret key. So you have to enter your name, your username just as before, and then your secret key. So if you're using the Yubi key, you just press the button and it enters it for you. Or if you're using the Google Authenticator, you open up your app. Uh, this is a screenshot of the um, iPod, uh, iPad, the iPhone version. And you can see this particular one set up to look after three websites. So you open up the Authenticator and it gives you a unique number to enter for your specific website. If you look closely on the right hand side, you'll see a blue circle. That's a timer. So as that timer goes down, which I think is 60 seconds, the number changes again. So that number is only valid once for 60 seconds. So the only way someone can get into my site is to find out my username and my password and to steal my key from my key ring, or to steal my iPhone. So that's why it's two-factor. There's my Yubi key on my key ring. So my next chocolate, one of my fat, I do love my chocolate, is templates. Who in here does templates? Is anyone a template designer? Great, okay. So we've updated the libraries. Uh, we've added more icons into the icon set. Uh, sensibly, we added the Joomla icon into the icon set. It was kind of strange, it was missing, but it's there now. Uh, there's lots more that are there. We've all introduced something new in 3.2 called J layouts. Um, simple explanation, J layouts are snippets. They're little bits of reusable code. For example, the article title could be a, a J layout. And that way your template just loads that whenever it wants it. So you only have to write that bit of HTML and layout once and you can reuse it across all of your views. And we've done something else that's new. It's this. We now have a full template editor inside Joomla. So you can actually go and edit any file of your template, the HTML, PHP, CSS, the JavaScript, and the images directly inside Joomla. You no longer need to switch to an FTP program, download it, edit it, upload it. You can do it all directly in the interface. You can edit the files, you can add new ones, you can take them away. But you can do something else. Joomla has this really cool ability to create overrides for all the existing views. Now the problem with overrides is to do it, 
You had to go to the component, you had to open your FTP program. You had to go to the component. You go to slash component slash com underscore content slash article slash view and that's the file you want. And then you have to copy it to a slightly different path inside your template. The instruct, it's hard to explain it speak, speaking. It's even harder to explain it writing it down. Well actually now, what you do is you browse to it, you click on it, you click create override, and it does it automatically. It copies the files into the right place in the right structure. And now you've got your overrides, exact, your, the files in the right place so that you can override them. Makes life much, much, much easier. So access control. Access control is deciding who can do what, who can see what on my website. Now, up until Joomla 3.2, we could define who could see that component, or who could see that article. What we could do is define who could see that module. Well, now you can. And you can set it for all modules, or just individual or selected modules. Because there was nothing worse than having a module that really was about uh, welcoming uh, your selling stuff. And you have this module on your website with all these special offers for new customers. And someone's logged in and registered as an existing customer. You don't want to see them the special offers if they're new, because that's going to annoy them that they can't get it. And maybe you want to show them special offers because they are existing customers. So you can do that now with the access control for modules. Who's the developer in the room? The coder. Okay, more of you. Okay? So don't bother asking me coding questions and telling you now because I'm not going to understand. Unless they're really, really simple, in which case you already know the answer. Um, but the debug mode in Joomla has been enhanced a lot. It's now got SQL explain, profiling, and call stack. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. If you do know what it means, I'll show you some screenshots. So you can see here, uh, we've got uh, the exist, well, you'll see the query being explained, that's kind of how it was before. But above it, you can see a timeline. And that timeline is showing you when the query is taking place and how long it's taking. taking. So it can really help identify if you've got some really slow queries on your site. Um, what was this one? Yeah, and here we can see that the, uh, in the status, the sending data is taking 3.3 milliseconds. It's clearly a long time. That's obviously something that you as a developer need to look at and fix. It's just the same development fix, not Brian fix. Um, well, the, you can also take it a stage further and you can see your call stacks as well. So what about the truffles? Well, also for the developers, we now have built into Joomla a RAD, a Rapid Application Development Library. Uh, it's called FOF, uh, which stands for Framework on Framework. And again, if you're a developer in the room, you'll know what a Rapid Application Development Library is. And if you're not, don't worry about it, it's not for you. Uh, the important thing is that it helps developers write their code quicker and have to write less code because they're using stuff that's already created in the library. That's the simple answer. If you want a more complex answer, probably ask David. Um, <coughs> I, just, I just get to give the overview. It's quite cool actually when you're not a developer and you're not a designer and you're talking about technical things. I can just pass everything off to somebody else. <laughs> so this, this one is the, is the one that interests me, is the user interface. Um, the Joomla user interface has gone through lots of changes over the years. Um, if you remember back to Joomla 1.0 days, it was looked a certain way. And Joomla 2.5, it looked a certain way. And Joomla 3, it made some improvements. And in 3.2, one thing, we, we put in quite a few changes. Um, and hopefully we'll have some more in 3.3. The object of the exercise is to make things simpler. Does anyone here train clients how to use Joomla? Okay, quite a few of you. 
How many of you have clients that say, what do I do there? You've got all these fields, what am I supposed to put there? Okay, so I, I do training all the time. What I tell my clients is, did Brian tell you to touch it? Well, don't. <laughs> That's great, but not everybody gets my training, so for the rest of them, we've tried really hard to move fields around so that the stuff that you only need to do occasionally is pushed away. And to put other things into the logical place where you would expect them. This makes creating your content faster, because you're not sitting there going, what do I need to put here? Because you don't need to. We've also done a lot of work on accessibility, making the interface more keyboard friendly. So a couple of quick examples. Um, this is the manager screen. Now, I've zoomed in a little bit, but you'll see there's a new button up there. Um, and it's called search tools. Because down the left hand side, you to have, there, there should be a big long list of filters there. Well, those filters have gone in 3.2, and they're replaced with that one box called Search Tools. When you click on that box, magically all the filters appear. So they're there when you need them, and they're hidden when you don't. That's one of the objectives that we've had, is to try and, try and do that as much as we can. So you can see here, now that I've clicked on the Search Tools, all the filters have appeared, and I can use them as I would. And importantly, actually, they're above the content. They're not down the side, so it's, they're in the right place on the screen. The article editor. Um, this one has had a, a few interesting changes over the years. And when we add new features into the article, uh, the content creator, there's always been a question of where do we put them? Now, in Joomla 3.1 and below, there was a new feature introduced called Images and Links, which allowed you to insert some images to a site to the article and some links. That was great, but where was it? It was somewhere down here. It was completely buried underneath the article and people never even saw it. People had been using Joomla for months and months and months, didn't see it because they never had a reason to scroll down too far. So we very sensibly created a new tab called Images and Links. Uh, we've also made a couple of other changes up there. You'll see uh, publishing is there. It used to be a, there used to be a publishing and a metadata. We've put the two in the same thing because they make sense. Uh, there was a little bug we fixed. Um, the article title is always on the page no matter which tab you're on. It didn't used to be. Kind of a it was one of those things that Radic mentioned, no one said anything. No one said, hey, you know when you switch to that tab, I no longer know which article I'm editing. Yeah? Seems obvious, and that's what happened. Everybody said, that's such an obvious bug, I don't need to tell you. But nobody did, so nobody noticed. As soon as it was noticed, we changed it. So the whole objective is to make the interface simpler. It can never be perfectly simple because there's so many different uses but we've done the best that we think we can do so far and we're hopefully we'll continue to make those changes this is perhaps considered to be the missing piece in the Joomla world it's something that people have been asking for for a very long time and it's something that took a lot of people some real concerted effort to, to make happen. Installing from the web or an app store. So it's not a real app store, so we are only calling it install from web, because you can't actually buy anything and stuff like that. But think of it as the Joomla extension directory built into your website. So let's actually, I've got a little video, let's actually have a look and see what it means. Well, if we go to the extension manager, you can see the four, there's now four tabs with the new one installed from web. But when you select it, you can see you've got the entire contents of the Joomla extension directory. Minus all the reviews, but you do have the ratings and everything else. And you can do all the sorting that you'd expect. 
um, navigate through the categories, and of course you can search. So if I was to search for JCE, there it is, and you can see now there's an install button. I click install, and it's a big extension, and that's it, it's installed. So I no longer have to go to the, from my website to the extension directory, search for JCE, go to the JCE website, download it to my computer, go back to my website, go to the extension manager, install it, you get the points. Yeah? It was a long process. Now it's much, much faster. Now, currently, it's up the extension developers have to change their listing on the extension directory to support the install feature. So because it's only been there for a few months, not everybody has done that. Um, if they haven't done that, that install link is replaced with a traditional download link. Um, it does support um, commercial add-ons, there is a way for doing that. Again, I'm not sure if, that, if anyone has done that yet, um, but that's definitely, the facility is there for that. That makes life much, much easier. Again, faster to do, easier to do. And the faster and easier it is to do something, the more someone will do it. If you make co creating content easy and not scary, people will happily update their website with new content. You know, they'll add new images, they'll do whatever it is that they have to do because it's easy to do and they enjoy doing it. When it's hard to do, they don't. And when it's hard to do, you end up with out-of-date websites. Then they go, this website you built is rubbish. It's not rubbish. It's really good what you did. Just they haven't updated it. Well, now we've met. We've really worked hard to make sure that Jumla 3.2 overcomes a lot of that to make it faster and easier for you. So I want to finish off with this number. Um, this number. That's not a live number. This was the number taken yesterday, at about four o'clock UK time. So five o'clock. That's the number of downloads of Joomla. And that's actually growing at 1 million downloads a month. Does that mean sites? No, of course not, because we can download it for testing and everything else. But actually, you can also download it and use one download 100 times. So maybe it equates to itself. So maybe the number of Joomla websites isn't 20 million. Maybe it's 50 million or 100 million. Yeah? And that's what we all work together. That's what every one of you contributes to when you use Joomla. When you, add, when you create something for Joomla, when you build a website with Joomla, you're all contributing to spreading that, as, it's, as it says on my laptop, spreading the Joomla love. So at that point, I want to say thank you very much. Um, I prefer to do questions later, um, because then you can ask me a specific question and we can spend a lot of giving you an, uh, answers. Um, I have a rule about questions. Um, you need to give me a coffee. Yeah? If you give me a coffee, you can ask me a question. Um, or you, a beer. Beer's, beer's also perfectly acceptable, although it might be a little bit too early. What time? What time is it now? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. No, it's fine. Yeah, beer's okay. <laughs> beer's okay now. So yeah, so questions anytime I am here. Um, as, as well as uh, Rabbit and David and, and Max, we are here all day, um, so um, please feel free to grab me at any point and, and ask me a question. Uh, just one question uh, that someone did ask me, I was at Joomla Day in the Netherlands, and um, I was talking to, I forget who I was talking to now, someone came up to me with a beer, and they said, uh, can, I ask, can I ask a question? Gave me the beer, I said, yes, of course you can. Where's the toilet? <laughs> so thank you very much.